how did you pick the music for Movie Talk, and have you ever considered changing it? I like it, man, because it's a nice, because a lot of people watching Movie Talk to start their day, to get, you know, to rev up, and it's not like this hard, you know, wake up call, like, but right. it's like, it's just a nice, ah, yeah, it's relaxing. Jing, 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 jing. Hey, Movie Talk, what's up? Instead of, jug, 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 Movie Talk, jug, jug, jug. I have a whole bunch of different versions, but I like to get the. I think I'm gonna. Yeah. Poison's not very busy today, are they? Yeah, let's call Poison. I'll just call it Poison. Yeah. So not Poison Control. Wait a second. <laughs> whole place is shut down. <laughs> I just dialed it. It was a mistake. Yeah. Ain't looking for nothing <laughs> but a movie talk. Yeah. Oh, how can I, I complain? Oh, resist or complain. Got two lyrics now. Damn it, snap! What? Let's get in sync. All right, what's next? Not in sync. Not the band. in sync. The Jesus band. Jesus Christ! What's happening? Movie talk. Movie talk. Yeah. <laughs> I think I know. I myself, I've started to wonder. Hey, maybe she's got a bigger role in this movie than I thought. But now hearing Snyder start off by saying, "Well, she's got a cameo." Uh, okay, it's not a cameo. She actually does something. Maybe that takes us back to the original assumption that we're probably not going to see a lot of Wonder Woman in this. And I think that would be a great thing. Why? Because I don't want to see Wonder Woman. No, 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 not at all. I want to see lots of Wonder Woman later on. I've just, you know me, I've always wanted the absolute big chunk of this movie to be focused on Batman and Superman. That's where I want the lens of this movie to be. Yes, I understand for all those millions of voices crying out, but John, it's also called Dawn of Justice. Yes, I understand that. <laughs> but it's Batman versus Superman. And that's where the focus of this movie needs to be. But John! <laughs> but John, excuse me, Mr. Campia. I, I disagree with both of you on the, on the case. John! <laughs> on the case of... That's like seven times a day around this office, ladies and gentlemen. Seven times a day. Hashtag but John. No, you have, you have no, you have no idea in the chat board how much has been hashtag but John. Ah, I'm going to be hearing this all day. It's all a right. new one. It's the, it's the new uh, Get Filthy or whatever. Right, bring on the all filter. right, what's next? All right, folks. Mom, are you watching today? Mom, turn on the computer. She turned on. But right, John! But <laughs> I was going to say something, but I won't. Garbage. So for those of you fortunate enough to not know what, what the question is talking about. So uh, about a week or, or so ago, somebody got on Reddit, which is a very exclusive thing. Very few people can get on Reddit and post anything uh, and sarcasm. So anybody can go on Reddit and post anything they want. Somebody went on Reddit and claimed that, it, by the way, this is an anonymous, unverified, nobody knows who this person is, person, random person hopped on. Uh, read it and posted that they saw Batman vs Superman and they they loved it and all this kind of stuff. Oh, good. Yeah, well, oh, I, I mean, well, there oh, we go. That's right. A it was one of the there studio executives that gave it a standing ovation. Yeah, one <laughs> of the studio executives. And you know, then some people saying oh, have been emailing and tweeting me and whatever, saying, "Why have you not been talking about this?" So one single, unverified, totally anonymous guy, randomly hops on Reddit and writes whatever he wants. And that's supposed to be a story? Really? It reminds me a lot, go back about a year or a little bit more than a year ago, remember when it came out that, hey guy, and I believe it was also on Reddit. I believe it was on Reddit. There's, guys, this image just appeared on Reddit. And you got that image there, Dennis? Let's bring that, okay, there it is. This image appeared yeah. on Reddit. <laughs> guys, Batman versus Superman is being split into two parts. The part one sounds like a gay, porn movie enter the night and the second part <laughs> is going to be called dawn of justice and it, the first was coming up low and everybody got all excited and i remember at the time telling everybody this is wait a minute so just somebody we don't know who posted this picture on reddit and we're supposed to believe this is real and so many people you you wait and see campia it, well you know what they said but John, <laughs> but John, yeah. it looks so real. Everybody was telling me, oh no, John, it's real. This is gonna be real, they're gonna split it in half. And sure enough, they 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 didn't. They might think it is the like the greatest film ever. I don't know. Because... But John, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Garbage. Hey guys, love the show. Will there be Collider t-shirts soon? Fans would love it. Yeah, well, I'm wearing uh, one. You and <laughs> <laughs> you in particular have been on my case for like a year about yeah no I'm, a it's, bring on the filthy shirt would sell like hotcakes yeah you have no idea how many people have asked me for either bring on the filthy shirts damn it Dennis shirts or, um, now John <laughs> yeah now we have that 
Uh, that would be an interesting. Yeah, actually, we we have had conversations actually with our new parent company, Complex Media. Um, they've actually they come to us and say, hey, maybe we should look at putting some merchandise together and putting some T-shirts together. So uh, I would say I, I don't know that'll be this week or this month, but I would say yes, it's definitely going to happen. There will be some uh, some uh, collider video T-shirts. Well, it's not a real merch store until you get beer koozies. Just so you know, yeah, yeah beer need, koozies. Yeah, most with of Natasha's face on it. I would, that would drink that. Like, I would drink that course light. Yeah. There we go. It's getting questions. weird, guys. It's getting weird. <laughs> that that didn't actually mean to sound weird at all. Hey, Natasha, <laughs> I drank your face last night. It's delicious. Hey. Thank you. <laughs> but John. <laughs> <laughs> Call that. Oh. What do you think of the idea of bringing back Gumby to the big screen? I'm Gumby, Gumby damn it. <laughs> Gumby. Gumby. He sent this no, question five times, so yeah, I have um, to ask it. I love that he, the, if you've ever seen, I mean, this guy's probably tripping balls right now, writing the question. <laughs> Gumby is the most psycho, psychedelic series ever made. It is a trip. If you've never seen Gumby, just go on YouTube right now. Hey, Mr. Bill. Type up, type up Gumby, <laughs> and I dare you to watch like four of them without feeling like you're on acid. Oh, no. They're really, they're really, they're really strange. He's talking about Saturday Night Live. That has nothing to do with Gumby. <laughs> Come on, Gumby. No, that's Mr. Bill. Gumby is just bizarre. Like I'm the, Gumby. Remember they it. would float around like this. It's scary the way they travel. They just float around like that. It's weird. But Gumby is like one of those things that it's still in the public consciousness in some degree. And by Pokey, some, his horse friend. Yes, like Pokey or Pokey. Yeah, I think what's going to happen is you might see Gumby pop up in a big screen film of something else, like like, like make a funny cameo in a Lego movie, in an Angry Birds movie, in a Trolls movie, in a Pez movie, but in an Emoji movie. You have all these silly <laughs> movies that are coming out where it's like, well, why wouldn't they take a known property like Gumby? I don't know that kids are aware of what Gumby is, but if you do the market research, I would not be surprised if you saw somebody say, hey, let's, let's redo Gumby in a modern age and just make it a funny, silly cartoon in the vein of something like we're going to see with Angry Birds. Uh, the answer is no. Uh, <laughs> well, I'll see myself out. But, oh my God. Look, if you haven't checked it, look up some old Saturday Night Live stuff, Eddie Murphy doing. Like, absolutely do what Schnepp just said and look up Gumby proper. But then look up Eddie Murphy doing Gumby. Gumby sure. It's I'm like Gumby, damn it. Gumby, yeah. damn it. He was yeah. so good as that. I mean, you so. talk about Chris Farley being one of the great SNL. Eddie Murphy is the greatest cast member yeah. in Saturday and the most important in Saturday Night Live history. And Gumby was just one of the many things that he touched and turned to gold. Kill my landlord. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Eddie Murphy is the magic man. I would love to see some kind of weird fusion of a Gumby. It, make it animated, but make it freakish and psychedelic and scary. It could almost be like a horror movie, like somebody waking up in a cold sweat. I just dreamt of him again, like Freddy Krueger, only it's Gumby. I want to be a DJ. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to have to effing go to work. I want to, I want to. I want like look, and I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to bash DJs at all. I mean, look, I hang out in Vegas a lot, man. Good DJs are diamonds when you for a club and stuff. I'm not, I'm not doing any of that. But where are those movies about the real kids who do real work and really dedicate themselves to really doing something? It's like, man, I don't like having a regular job. I'm gonna go sleep with my boss's girlfriend. I just, I just don't get it. I cannot get into this trailer. Whatsoever for me, Zach. I still love you, dude. But sell it doesn't sound good at all. <laughs> it, it doesn't sound good at all. And I, I John can't be the wet blanket of Monday. When, when Vin Diesel, when you get Vin <laughs> Diesel, who is a huge star power right now, massive star power right now, can do a lot of Eagles or franchises. Anybody want to take a guess what grand total combined all three Riddick movies have made? Hmm. Grand total. Oh, I want I 100 under, million. I think it's no, under because, Hunger Games. Yeah, uh, under Hunger Games. Uh, Hunger Games. Uh, 223 You're million. You're close. It's, about, it's around $250 million okay. that hmm. all three put together. Nobody cares about Riddick. <laughs> uh -uh. The numbers prove it. I Nobody care. cares. I care about Riddick. Mr. Campia. Mr. Campia. I believe me and Alice care about well, apparently Riddick. Apparently, nobody went with you to the theaters because <laughs> nobody cares. Come on. Come on, nerds, let's make this happen. I mean, that's the thing. Even though it's Vin Diesel, the I last know. one. Like John, the Necroverse is vast. <laughs> Let me just talk about the Necroverse for a minute. It's a vast universe. 
It's a vast universe that people don't necessarily go out right. to see. That's so it. we're yeah. going to bring the universe <laughs> to you guys at That's home. Right. It's going to be now, on TV. Just like Reddit, you don't have to get up your couch to go yeah. see it. It will come to Vin Diesel will come to your house. <laughs> Who's that? It's it's the guy. It's Dom Toretto. Let right. him in. We've got a cool here. universe to show you. Yeah, Riddick's got those silver eyes. Time to check out some <laughs> weird know, bounty I'll hunters. I Zoolander is one of those movies for me that I still. About 15 out of the 30 nights a month, I will fall asleep to with Zoolander on the TV. I love mm -hmm. Zoolander. I've been dying for a sequel. This trailer sucks. I sell this. This trailer <laughs> sucks. This has gone from being a pithy, you know, kind of juxtaposition thing of the world of fashion with intelligent stuff. It's stupid guy and blah, blah, blah. And in the original Zoolander, Derek was simple, but when it came to certain things, he was actually incredibly intelligent. They did that in certain parts of the movie where, where he's simple, yet really smart in some things. And this just felt like a, this felt like a Beavis and Butthead trailer. Like in many ways, the feel of it was like a beef. And I just thought it was nonsense. And now for the first time since even the concept of a Zoolander 2 came up, which I've been so excited about. I now I don't care about this movie now. You think just that is what this trailer has done for me. I do not care about this movie now. It just feels like they're going, you know, let's just go as stupid as we can. Like it honestly, uh. it felt like a trailer made for. I don't know. Babies, like, <laughs> babies. Maybe that what would if it was it. called I hated two, the two Lander? You would hate it. Well, More no. Or less. Well, well, I mean, <laughs> if funny, if he was Roman, <laughs> I, 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 the jokes it felt so obvious. The two and, in the Z. I, come I, on, I, no, John, come but on. This is I wanted, though. you know, and this, I've been looking forward to this movie more than any of all of this table. I was right. so excited for this, and now I'm like, I don't. I even think it's because you were it. too excited. Maybe about it. I think that you were. Be it. Uh, maybe yeah. you were expecting to see like footage or something. You're like, when are they going to get to the footage? Why do they keep showing outer space? Maybe that was it. Is that why you well, didn't no, shave I, this morning? Because I, you were so depressed I, over Zoolander? I was Zoolander. so down about this. Yeah. I, I, I can't even eat. I, can't I saw him at a gas myself. station playing with the gas. Like, <laughs> I saw Maybe it. I was like, what are you doing? Oh, yeah. you go, go. Why do you guys think Power Rangers will suck, but are geeking out over other superheroes? <laughs> don't. Okay, first of all, don't don't call Power Rangers superheroes. Yeah. Okay, Blasphemy. That's, that's, and it's not right or correct. No, that's totally different. <laughs> and you're different. stupid for thinking that. that yeah, that's, well, I'm, I'm not going to go as far as my, my esteemed colleague on my left, but... Um, look, I think there is a spark of hope there. I mean, every like everybody's very conveniently forgetting that there, the last Power Rangers movie to hit theaters was a monumental bomb. Monumental bomb. Um, and that show was stupid. That's just my opinion. I mean, th that's taking nothing away from you. If you saw, if you were one of the people who liked that original Power Ranger stuff, there's nothing wrong with that. That's awesome that you liked it. I encourage you to like it if, if you liked it. But my personal opinion, you're going to just have to get used to the fact that other people have different opinions, is that I thought it sucked. Um, and so I don't have a lot of hope for it as a format uh, coming to the big screen. But I've always said, right from the day that they announced that stupid movie, I've always said that there are things you could do because while I did not like that online Power Rangers reimagining, that I didn't like it. But what it did do was it introduced us to the notion that, you know what, you can take Power Rangers and there's 50 different ways you could do it. Right. And I do believe there are ways, there are approaches they could take with a Power Rangers uh, franchise that is not totally similar to what the TV series was that right. could be pretty cool. I'm very encouraged by the casting of Elizabeth Banks, but... Look, it's great if you are looking forward to it, but you have to at least acknowledge why there are people like like a John Schnapp and a lot of other people who have nothing but pessimism for it. You've got to at least acknowledge why they feel that way. So I don't know, Schnapp, how would you say Let that? me say this. Like, I'm glad you like Power Rangers and say, and say they're superheroes. They are. They're super heroic. I'll say if Power Rangers was going to adapt something like Battle of the Planet slash G-Force, you, however you saw it or whatever you, you called it where you saw it, that kind of Voltron-esque kind of thing with the kids, the spaceships, all this kind of stuff. That, to me, when I watched that as a kid, I loved Battle of the Planets. I loved, which I found out say, later was G-Force. Jason, Mark, Princess, Keop, Tiny. Yeah, dude, and you nailed Phoenix it. And the Phoenix Yeah, one button. One missile launch button, just Thank a big you. red button that they just keep hitting. I just I regain, regained so much respect even after you said you had that spark of hope with Fire Ranger. By you naming off all of the bat with Keop as well, which is, a, you know, that's a, a tiny. Come on. Give this man a round of applause right now. That's amazing. I couldn't have done it. But that's what I'm saying. Not to be the pessimistic jerk face that I'm being right now saying, ah, oh, fuck Power Rangers. But 
I'm not saying the F Power Rangers. I'm just saying, like, look, I'm not that excited about it. I don't care who I like cast. how you say the word, yeah. and then you censor <laughs> yourself. Kind of, you recent, I'm, just, I'm saying F Power Rangers, but I'm not saying fuck Power Rangers. What I'm trying to say, <laughs> I'm glad they got Elizabeth Banks. She's super talented. If they keep making announcements about this, eventually I'll probably get that spark that you got. Where you're like, you know, I might want to see this. Depending on what they do with the Power Rangers, it just missed me. I missed the boat on the series. I never got into it. It's like these high school kids who become these weird dudes in spandex who then form a robot or whatever. I like Ultraman. I like Battle of the Planet. So if they could get that sensibility into this, maybe they'll get my dumb ass to enjoy it. But I don't count. It's You guys might love Power Rangers, and you should, and you should enjoy it. What you want is a really good Power Rangers movie. I just don't know if they can keep that 80s mentality. What do you Well, think? we don't know if they will or not. And, yeah. and here's the other thing to keep in mind, too. Let's keep this in mind. Going into Fantastic Four, we were all pessimistic at first, but then they start announcing casting, and then they start announcing who's writing and all that kind of stuff, and we started going, I know I did, I right. started going, you know what, I am buying in. Yep. Well, look how that turned out, but in the Power Rangers defense, this movie, in, in, the, in this project's defense, they've got a couple of really good screenwriters on. The people who wrote X-Men Days of Future Past, or right. not Days of Future, X-Men uh, First Class, sure. the original Thor, who, which is one of my favorite Marvel Fantastic. films still. Yeah. So now you got really talented writers on, you're bringing in Elizabeth Banks. You know, I, I'm, I'm starting to get a little bit of that warming up like I did to Fantastic Four. Now, will it still turn out like Fantastic <laughs> Four? It's like, should never have warmed up to it. I don't know. But, I mean, there is that there, too. When news and information comes in here, we try to break it down and digest it in a semi-intelligent form. But sometimes it just goes back to you put all the science aside and you're just like, is it something that appeals to me? Whether it's because it was something you caught when you were a kid or something that really strikes you as an adult. As a child, I love Ninja Turtles. And as an adult, if I was just coming into meeting the Ninja Turtles, I don't know if I would care about them or not, but I, I would give my life for them because I grew up as a kid watching that cartoon and playing with those toys. Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, it just didn't hit me when I was a kid. I just thought it looked stupid, and I'm sorry about that. It just maybe it was the production values were weak because it was a half-hour TV show. It just didn't fit for whatever reason. Same thing with comic books. I would pick up X-Men and love it. I could pick up Youngblood. I could pick up Shadowhawk and love these things, but then i pick up Fantastic Four or Death Blow, and I'd be like, yeah, it's probably not for me. It's just something about how it strikes you, and Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, to me, has to win me over. It's not something like Ninja Turtles, where I just give you the benefit of the doubt because I've loved your previous efforts. Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, you're starting already, you're like, you're in golf terms, you're plus two. You got to make a couple birdies just to make me excited about you, a lot like what Fantastic Four was able to do, and then I got in the theater, and well, we know how that happened. <laughs> Yeah, I'm, I'm completely with you on, especially the cover of the magazine. I thought the cover of the magazine was just three images of things that we haven't not seen already. You know, it was... I haven't seen Batman that chubby. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just, you know, it was, okay, it was there. So it's cool to see that it's on the cover. I'm dying with anticipation to see the film. That being said, the comments from Affleck are bang on. They're absolutely... Here's the, here's the thing. A couple of decades ago, and Schnepp can speak more to this than I can, really, but a couple of decades ago, there was a shift in the Batman character in the comic books. He became a character who truly was, he was skin that was just containing a, a, a boiling eruption of rage and anger that comes from the moment of seeing his parents killed in that alley, to the point now that he unleashes that rage and anger now in a controlled way on those who would prey upon the innocent in Gotham City. In essence, any criminal in Gotham has to pay the price for the people who killed his mother and father. That's Batman. We started to get a little, we did get a glimpse of that Batman in the Christopher Nolan, Christian Bale Batman. But we have never really truly seen it embodied. And what I love about these comments from Ben Affleck and the fact that he is such a lifelong Batman nerd mm -hmm. is that you knew he was going to bring that. He wanted that element of it. When Zack Snyder started talking about you know, uh, The Dark Knight Returns being such a heavy influence, you knew we were going to get a glimpse of that rage-infused Batman. And in that trailer, man, when you hear Jeremy Irons talking about uh, the, he becomes cruelty or whatever, and that there's a close-up on Affleck's face, if you watch it close, man, I love that trailer because when you watch those frames closely, Affleck's face is shaking. You just feel the rage coming off it. And to see that Batman... Now, that doesn't mean that this Batman is going to be better than Christian Bale's Batman. Not, not, not at all. But I do think we are going to get this element of Batman that Bale's Batman didn't give us. And I am very excited about that. Whether they use it right or wrong, we're going to have to wait and see. 
But just the fact that they seem to be zoning in on that, super stoked. Snap, you were about to say. Uh, nothing as cool as that. I was just going to say, if Michael <laughs> Bay directed Murder on the Orient Express, it would just be the train exploding in slow motion for like two hours. That's all I was going to say. <laughs> nothing as poignant as that yeah, about a, Kate Blanchett. A I'm just a gar- to follow. <laughs> yeah. I just had a garbage joke. That's it. <laughs> He's had a great story about Cape Blanchett. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, thanks. It was a good joke. We're all like, like, we were so into that story. I know. <laughs> That's one. I put some icing on the cake there, guys. All right, gals. guys. Thanks for watching the Beatles on Ed Sullivan. Next up, a magician with poo jokes. How much do you guys think that the Twilight Zone has influenced major feature films? And what are your guys' thoughts on the Twilight Zone? Thanks. Well, I remember... I, I th- the answer is yes and no. I mean, because I do remember the original film of uh, Child's Play and one of the filmmakers talking about that episode of Twilight Zone. And if you don't know the episode of Twilight Zone that I'm talking about, it is one of the freakiest 25 minutes or whatever it is you could spend in front of your television with the lights turned off. And this is old 50s black and white thing. And it's about this mean alcoholic dad and he's got a little girl who's got a doll and the doll starts to talk and I'm actually getting freaked the hell out just thinking about the episode. It is, <laughs> it doesn't run around and wield the knife. It's just, you know, my name's Molly and I'm your friend and other things. My name's Molly. You should be nicer. Is it, what the hell? Then finally later near the end of the episodes, my name's Molly and I'm going to kill you. And it's like, and I'm just, it sounds so simple, mm-hmm. but it was the simple techniques of Twilight Zone that was, oh my, look at, look at my arms. <laughs> look at my arm. That, I'm just getting freaked out about it. They, that was so effective. I challenge anybody to watch that episode of Twilight Zone at night with the lights off. Anyway, Hal, you had a chance to watch a trailer last night your thoughts on it. Absolutely. And I watched it even uh, more than John because I watched it about 50 times in my dreams. <laughs> and uh, I'm... And he guess as always is John Campia. Well, yippee, everybody. Welcome to the show. Coming to you. I don't know where that came from. Yippee. yippee. Thank you for joining us today. Coming to you from right here at the Collider Video Studios here in Burbank, California. And Ashley is apparently a thumbnail. I am. Also here, John Schnepp. Yippee, Anakin and stuff <laughs> like that things. Hi. Yippee, also here, Mark Ellis. Welcome to Clotter Movie Talk. It's going to be a podcast racing good time today. <laughs> podcast racing good time. If you couldn't tell, we watched, we did our Attack of the Clones mm-hmm. commentary yesterday. Mm-hmm. It is now up and online. We just haven't made it public yet. We'll make it public uh, uh, this afternoon. It'll be public enough for those of you who've been waiting so desperately to see it. we got to take all those F-bombs out of it first. <laughs> yeah, after watching our uh, Phantom Menace commentary, the Attack of the Clones commentary is already just sitting on our server, waiting yep. to be revealed to the world. Just brewing <laughs> slowly. <laughs> waiting for everybody to watch it and all it's good to say. Oh, oh, oh I all see. Right. We weren't going <laughs> to do it, but then we realized <laughs> the number four is there. Uh, hey. It's feet. It feels feet, like it's feet. Yeah, they're not going to. Fantastic Four in phase five doesn't feel right. <laughs> Fantastic Four, Phase Four. Hmm. But wait, all Phase Four is going to be just six Fantastic Four that universe means, movies. That's what? it. The world's going crazy. Yeah. Chris Pratt. Oh, Ray nails it for fifty oh. points in the back. That's Ray Aura. That wow. was Chris Pratt before anybody really knew who Chris Pratt was, nice. which is kind of interesting. Nothing tastes better when you get a foot in your face. <laughs> like you were like fighting in karate or something. It just Shanae just reminded me about like <laughs> sparring and getting a grown man's foot in your face. I'm sure some things taste a little bit better. No, nothing tastes worse is what I'm trying to say. Oh, okay. Or except when you say gesundheit and don't really mean it. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, also here it's Mark Ellis. You would know because apparently Sinead can take John Schnepp in a fight. She's a blue belt. Schnepp only made it to green belt. Oh. Fun fact. <laughs> All right. Okay. So it's Monday. I never host on Mondays. I'm really excited. I know. We're so, it's so exciting. Sinead is here. I'm honored to meet a blue belt. I'm in such a good mood. It's because I never get to do the box office report. It's like, sell. Um, I'm, I'm gonna say here's and, and here's why. I I was go- earlier today. I, are you okay? I was uh, yeah, over the room. Go on. Oh my okay. God. I have to hear How this. dare you sell okay. it? Okay, so here's the thing. I earlier today I was going to buy it because I watched it for the first time because I I have not been impressed so far. Look, I really like what Disney's been doing with their animated films lately. Big fan. And just because you know you don't like something the way it looks at first, it can turn out to be awesome. That being said, um. I watched the trailer early this morning, and I was like, that was really cute. By far, favorite part of the trailer is that sloth, after he hears the joke, (laughs) and the slow motion of his smile, priceless, absolutely priceless. 
But then I watched it with you guys a little bit later. And I found myself just waiting to get to that part because nothing else in the trailer is entertaining at all. Nothing else in the trailer was funny. Nothing else in the trailer was charming. Then it gets to that big smile thing and then my heart felt happy again. It's really great. But I realized after watching it a second time, it's like, you know what? No, I don't think this is that good of a trailer. I had one great moment and everything else is just kind of wasted time and I still don't have a lot of hope for this movie. Hope I'm wrong. I'll be there opening day to check it out. But right now, I'm just not on board. So for me, I got to sell it. Now, the first thing he does every day, he walks in, goes into the fridge, mm -hmm. finds my lunch. And the first <laughs> words out of his mouth every day are, is this your lunch? <laughs> well, now it's mine. That's, That's what he does <laughs> every day. It. Yep. And, I, and I'm, Ellis, I can't do a, anything he's about a it. a real monster. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. ah, delicious McRib. <laughs> thing is, if you're having a debate that we need to settle with you and your buddies at a bar, that's one thing. If you're debating with your grandma over which Christmas movie to watch, right. she yeah. might opt for a Christmas yeah. carol. I think yeah. she wins. Yes. Grandma wins. Yes, yes. Christmas story it is. No. And it comes, do you remember oh, that? Oh, that's right. And all the Swedes were bragging. That's, that's right. Snip. And it was the Snip, Swedes. I got to see it before you. I'm a Swede and I got to see it before that you. A, that's a really horrible a accent. I, no, I'm not doing a Swede. I, I'm just doing a I got to see it before you bragging jerk that those you Swedes that oh, love me, I'm not talking about you. I'm talking about the angry, hateful Swedes who get to see Star Wars first. You better shut up. I think, no I think Avengers that came is, That out. is yeah. what, what jerks sound like. That's exactly. Yeah, what... get to see it before you. Yeah. Yeah, they, they, All they of our that. equipment <laughs> is from <laughs> Ikea, so you can't hate <laughs> yeah, that much. I know. Everything yeah. we are on the the squirrel-long <laughs> desk and the obsonk, uh, you know, basket case and the fimblar uh, bookshelf. Thank you, Swedes. Uh, I mean, they're making a Pez movie. You know, <laughs> making an emoji movie, making yeah, an right. Angry Birds movie. Why not? Tetris. Yeah. What's happening to this planet? The adventures of <laughs> Father Bear and Mother Bear and Brother and Sister Bear. They never yeah. like, took the time to name themselves, probably because right. the bears are just trying to survive. But but you make it adventures. really dark. Yeah. Like yeah. Brother Bear is hooked on heroin. Yeah. <laughs> He's hooked on bear heroin. Yeah. Oh. Barrowin. <laughs> Man, I can't get enough shots of this barrowin, dude. <laughs> so many childhoods just oh. collapsing. Oh, I'm he's selling dates with his sister to pay for his addiction? <laughs> now I really oh want, I want to see this Dark. movie so bad. Totally live action. <laughs> yeah, like, Father Bear's home. Who <laughs> wants it first, kids? That's right. And oh, add a couple of really dark gosh. songs. <laughs> yeah. Oh, That's let's great. totally destroy our fond memories of this wonderful <laughs> thing. Just call it Barrowin. <laughs> You are, ah, see, uh, see, that's a good one. See, that's that, a good one. See, it works in it your favor. It benefits everyone. I'm not trying to help cancer research. I'm trying to help you get laid. <laughs> John Byers said that we will eventually get a Hellboy three. I saw it. I saw the idea that it's ever going to happen. And honestly, I love Guillermo del Toro. Man, I love this guy. But I got, but it was only about eight months ago that in another interview asked about help possible Hellboy three. He said it would minimum cost two hundred million right. to make. Now he's got an interview saying somewhere along the lines he chopped eighty million dollars out of that and said it's hundred. I want to ask this question: Why does it have to be one hundred twenty million dollars? Why does it have to be that expensive? Like the last Hellboy movie, total worldwide, made one hundred sixty million dollars. That means you're going to lose a huge mm. chunk of money if you make a movie right now for one hundred twenty. And here's the other question: The last Hellboy movie, which had a lot of special effects and a lot of weird, wacky, awesome things going on. He made that for $85 million. Inflation is not that steep. Why does this one have to be 20? I keep going back to this one. District 9, with tons of amazing visual effects, CG aliens, all that kind of stuff, $30 million. There is a problem in Hollywood today, and that problem is rampant overspending. There is far too much money being spent on producing these movies these days when other movies come out and prove they don't need to spend that much. And then people ask, why are movie tickets so expensive? Because the bleeping studios and filmmakers insist on, oh no, this movie's gonna cost $200 million to make. And now we get, so we can't just charge $7 for a ticket. Now we got charge $9 for a ticket. You know, I just don't get it. And the filmmaker like Guillermo del Toro, who has a background in indie filmmaking, right? Who has a background in budget filmmaking. Why does a Hellboy 3, when the first Hellboy I think costs like 55 million to make, the second one costs 85, why does Hellboy 3 need to be 120 million? When District 9 costs 30, like I just, why does it have to cost that much? If really the big roadblock right now, because apparently Ron Perlman wants to do it, right. Guillermo says he wants to do it, you know, the there are fans out there who want it. If the big roadblock is budget, then come up with a movie that you can shoot for a reasonable price. 
Hellboy is awesome because of Hellboy. Right. Just give us Hellboy. I'm I'm a little proclaimed by it, but I don't think he's really all that interested. I think he says he's interested, but I don't really think he is. So I don't think it's ever going to happen. We need somebody humping a leg. That's what this scene's missing. <laughs> what about peeing on a leg? Or oh, pee on a his dog leg. Yeah. Yes. No, we need more racist robots in this yeah. scene. Yes. That's what, what about it balls? Means. Robots have balls, right? Giant Show that. Robot Giant robot testicles. balls. <laughs> Makes sense to me. And what? boobs. Lots and lots of boobs. Yeah. Uh, robots I mean, cowering behind buildings. Now she's uh. having this really intense moment with her father discussing their, their tragic past but what if she's wearing a short skirt and bending over the couch while she's having that conversation <laughs> that's a yeah. michael bay thing to do tiny robots big robots it's going to be insane so i think it's it's exciting <laughs> tiny robots, and, yeah. Big robots. <laughs> yeah you can actually have a toy and it's like no it's this is the size it's supposed to be it's on my shoulder it's a micronaut i don't know but and then I'm, and then we can have Riddick jump in. Watch my TV show. That's right. And Ant Man. <laughs> I'm also part of the microverse. Yeah, Ant Man's and a super tie on, on, yeah. on uh, Flash. Right. I'm, uh, I'm, a, I'm part Iron Man anyway. Write me. The shrinking <laughs> like, thing right yeah. now is very popular. Everyone's so. into people getting tiny. I guess it's like a drug reference. So. <laughs> Everyone's guilty. I can't wait to see it. So. See, I was hoping for Michael Bay. I got to be honest with you. <laughs> That's right. No, this is totally. This, 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 I'm, I'm on board with this. Totally packed. Probably helped affect the box office globally. <laughs> globally. globally. No, I mean, I was <laughs> yeah. I was at the Funny Bone in Omaha, and there were just tons of people <laughs> who were like, we're seeing you. And Alice, so Alice's again. fault. Yeah. That $20 million went right here, baby. That's I was going to go see Peanuts, <laughs> and then I found out Mark Ellis yeah. was he's here in, in Omaha. He's in Midwest that often. Nebraska. Yeah. <laughs> and never know the pain of how long we've had to wait. But, hey, that's the magic of animation. I Although they've done them. a pretty good job giving us some good films in the No, meantime. I know. Yeah. Believe me, I'm not complaining. It's one that she never refers to them as new kids. Yeah. Like, oh, we got a new shipment of kids coming yeah. in. Like, <laughs> Unbox them. It's Boxing Day. It's after Christmas. I got to return these. These kids yeah. are defective. These kids aren't working out. They haven't seen Incredibles yet. Get them on board. Schnapp, which, if any of these actresses, would you like to see in Baywatch? Well, this isn't really what I would call a short list. This is like the seven, the seven. Well, as opposed uh, to the hundred yeah, candidates, I guess. Seven, uh, seven beautiful ladies, all, uh, you know, obviously they're going to be in bikinis and bathing suits. And it's Baywatch. They've already got The Rock. There's going to be a bunch of other like stud hunk dudes that they're going to be like trailing out on their whatever short list. So this is like the uh, the meat market version of which ladies yeah. here uh, do you guys or gals find attractive? So I'd say all of them, you know? I had to do my <laughs> research this morning because I wasn't, wasn't familiar with a lot of them. So I found all of them incredibly stunning and beautiful, and I think they should all be in Baywatch. How's that for a lady? <laughs> Man, talk about the dog pound. I mean, you think in Hollywood they could have found somebody at least remotely attractive. Oh, my God. I mean... That's quite the list. And he well, we already know Leo's winning this year for The Revenant, but I think the best supporting actor could go to Snow, baby. If not this <laughs> year, <laughs> it could look, It could happen, okay? The Force Awakens could be awesome, and it could get nominated for a lot of Oscars. Having said that, I think he's definitely going to win an Oscar at some point for something. I would, I would assume it would be best supporting actor, but even if it's not that, even if they do something with performance capture, where even if, you know how they host the Oscars, but then uh, at a certain point during the ceremony, they cut away to two weeks ago right. at the Science of Demi yes, Awards, hosted yeah. by like Alan Thicke or somebody, we gave away. <laughs> Oh, wow. <laughs> Everybody loves the Sieber family. That's right. He might win one of those, if nothing else. So, yes, Andy Serkis will definitely have some hardware from the Oscars on his mantle at some point. Yeah, yeah Phantom Menace should be remade. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what's next? Uh, he also asked Pizza or Calzone, and I'm just really curious. Pizza or Calzone? Um, You know what? Years <laughs> ago, I was really a Calzone guy, but I, I think I've gone to just... I like me my traditional pizza. Yeah. I really do. Why is that even a... Yeah. Why? It's always it pizza. I, the answer is pizza. Pizza. Oh, okay. Well, Calzone on the size, Unless what? it's the low-cal Calzone zone. <laughs> Never. I would, a, if any of you get that reference, it's good it. for you. I would right. have a hot pocket over a Calzone, all right? Whoever thinks oh, a Calzone, no. calzone no. is better calzones than are good. Come calzones down off your ivory good. tower and eat with the rest of us plebs. <laughs> Enjoy pizza. Ellis, God's hang on a second. What about pizza, 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 calzone, pizza, pizza, pizza? Oh, uh, like you just, missed one in there. You missed one note. Throw a Calzone in there occasionally. A strong bully, maybe. What's next? Star-Lord, the Empire kills Thanos? <laughs> <laughs> all right, what's next? <laughs> Mr. John Schnepp, Schnepp, where can people find you online? First of all, you can find this movie, Dancing Beyond the Battle Beyond the Stars. How about that? Uh, oh, it's pretty horrible. I'd pay to uh, see you that. You can find me on Twitter and Instagram, just at John Schnepp, at tdoslwh.com. You get my movie, The Death of Superman Lives, What Happened, by going to www.tdoslwh.com. 
Sitting over here, Mr. Mark Ellis. Mark, where can people find you? All right, I'm at the World Famous Laugh Factory tonight doing a very special charity show in Southern California coming out this weekend. I'm in West Palm Beach in Florida. Online at 5150 Ellis, and I have our combo movie, gentlemen. All right. Yeah. Jaws and Point Break. Yeah. You guys like Adrenaline <laughs> Rush? Let's see how you do with Bruce. <laughs> I like what it. What do you point Jaws? How about that? Jaws Point. Jaws Point. Jaws Point. Like, yeah. And of course, soon to be seen in the upcoming Baywatch movie, the lovely Miss Ashley Mova. Ashley, where can people find you? On Twitter and on Instagram, at Ashley Mova. Happy Tuesday, guys. And of course, you can find me on the various social media networks. Follow me at John Campia. That'll do it for us, guys. Thanks so much for joining us. And until next time, bye bye.